An eventful day for both 2024 presidential election frontrunners. A report released on President Biden's handling of classified documents and arguments begin in a Supreme Court case on whether former President Trump can be on the ballot. Both expected to have a major impact on November. Digging through the data, experts sift through cell phones and devices owned by Fotis Dulos to learn more. And the trial of Michelle Traconis will bring you up to speed on day 20. Four months after a teenage boy was killed in a fatal crash, another teenager has been arrested in his death. Both are accused of stealing the car and more people could soon be charged. The latest developments out of Orange. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. We begin tonight with an adamant statement from the president responding to a special counsel's report concerning his possession of classified documents. Thanks for joining us here for the News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. In that report, investigators specifically called into question his mental faculties, bringing up examples when the president forgot key information. It found the president had willfully kept classified materials during his time as vice president, senator, and even as a private citizen. The report says some notes contain sensitive intelligence, sources, and methods, and also accuses him of sharing that information with a ghostwriter. I did not share classified information. I did not share it. With your ghostwriter? With my ghostwriter. I did not. Guarantee you did not. But the what special the, counsel said in well, the report no, that he did, did not say that. Okay. Oh, he did not say that. But Mr. President. Special counsel Robert Hur says no criminal charges will be filed against President Biden, in part because a jury might view him as, in their words, an elderly man with a poor memory. The president argues the report firmly concluded that he did not break the law. He stood firm when questioned about his mental fitness and ability to serve as president for another four years. I'm the most qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Do you, do you our other top story tonight concerns President Biden's presumed opponent in the upcoming 2024 election. Our nation's highest court heard arguments about whether former President Donald Trump can be barred from appearing on the presidential primary ballot in Colorado. That lawsuit brought by a 91-year-old Republican voter has made it to the Supreme Court and the justice's decision will have major implications for the entire election. Now, that suit cites a cause in the 14th Amendment of the Constitution barring anyone who engages in insurrection from holding public office. The question is whether the president's alleged actions of January 6, 2021 meet that criteria as he has never been formally charged with insurrection or even if the clause can apply to a president in the first place. Can you take the person that's leading everywhere and say, hey, we're not going to let you run? You know, I think that's pretty tough to do, but uh, I'm leaving it up to the Supreme Court. Whatever the court rules is going to impact the primaries as they happen. Um, and uh, so I think it is reasonable for the court to issue a ruling sooner rather than later. The Supreme Court has not gotten involved in a presidential election since the Florida recount of Bush versus Gore in 2000. Their decision in this case will impact other states with pending litigation to remove Trump from the 2024 ballots. The next primary that would apply to is Colorado in March. All right, turning to the weather now and a few more clouds moving in tomorrow, but the temperatures are still warm. Yeah, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank for a first look at the forecast. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, gosh, no clouds tomorrow. What are we going to do? Uh, but yeah, we are still looking at temperatures way above average for this time of year, and the warmest has yet to come. 37 right now in the Hartford area. We are seeing increasing clouds, and it won't be as cool tonight as it has been. A warm front is approaching, so that will result in increasing clouds. Overnight lows will hang in the low to mid 30s as we head towards daybreak. And there is a chance for an isolated shower early tomorrow morning, right around 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. Not everyone will see that. Otherwise, after a cloudy start to the day, we might break for some midday sunshine. Upper 40s as we head towards lunchtime with high temperatures in the low 50s as we head through the afternoon. And it could be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees warmer on Saturday. 
Saturday. We do have a dose of winter reality though as we head into next week. We'll talk about that plus the chance for some snow coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, police in Berlin have made an arrest in connection to a shooting that seriously injured a teenager. 18-year-old Benjamin Homar is accused of firing a gun and hitting a 17-year-old girl on Dimming Road last Sunday. Police say that girl then walked herself to a hospital with a gunshot wound in her stomach. Thankfully, she has since been released. She is expected to be okay. Homar is being held on a $750,000 bond. Almost four years later, a grieving family may finally have answers as to what happened to their daughter. Jonathan Jara Akupina, the former boyfriend of Lizbeth Alman Popoka, was and has entered a plea, a guilty plea in her murder. Jara Akupina was the person uh, who first reported that she was missing in July of 2020. He quickly became uh, he quickly became investigators' lead suspect in her killing. Almond Pup Coca was found in a shallow grave behind a Branford restaurant later that month. Jara Akupina faces 25 years in prison. From the plea deal, he'll be sentenced in April. Day 20 of the Michelle Traconis trial and the state is digging into data from cell phones and vehicles attached to Fotos Dulos the day his estranged wife disappeared. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc breaks down what happened in court today. Pictures, messages, photos, videos, location data. Phone data from Fotis Dulos, the day his estranged wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos, went missing. Detective Michael Clark with Fairfield Police dug through all of it. That Friday morning until around 1230 in the afternoon, police believe he left his phone at his Farmington home. During that period of time, it remained in that area. During that time, police say Fotis was headed to and from New Canaan, where he allegedly killed Jennifer before coming back home. None of the calls or texts in that time were answered, except one at 8.24 a.m. from a friend in Greece, which police allege in the arrest warrant was an alibi arranged by Fotis the day before. This is a, a message, a sent message um, from uh, Fotis Dulos that says, call me tomorrow morning. A call police say Traconis admitted to answering herself in her third interview with them, saying it was brief. The friend on the other line is the same one who sent this meme to Fotis that week. All right, you have two choices. A, you can spend the rest of your life with your wife. Or B. Earlier in the day, jurors heard from a forensic scientist who analyzed data from Fotis's cars, tracking the Ford Raptor the Friday Jennifer went missing. Later that morning, we're at 9.53 a.m. It's now at a house in New Canaan, Connecticut. Fotis's ex-employee, Pavel Gumieni, testified he had the Raptor that morning. Mark News says there are data points for the truck being there until that afternoon, corroborating that testimony. Did the vehicle move from that spot at those three specific times? Uh, it did not appear to. Those three specific data points are right on top of each other. But that night, police believe Fotis had the Raptor in Hartford, dumping evidence along Albany Ave with Michelle Traconis in the passenger seat. At 7.48 p.m., there's one GPS point of data showing the vehicle on Albany Avenue in Hartford. <clears throat> evidence Traconis's defense attorney says is not new and not relevant to his client. All of this is about the trial of the uh, deceased Fotis Dulos and not anything to do with my client. Now what jurors didn't see is any text messages or calls on Traconis's phone. That is because the judge agreed to suppress that evidence long before this trial began. Now there is no court on Friday or Monday because of the holiday. So testimony continues on Tuesday. We are in Stamford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Julia, thank you. A teenager faces a litany of charges tonight in connection with the deadly hit and run crash that left another teen dead. It happened last October in Orange. Police say the 16 year old they arrested today, along with Jasser Cyprian, who died in the crash, stole a BMW in Milford. They ran a red light on Route 34, crashing into a tractor trailer at the intersection of Orange Center Road. The 16 year old who survived escaped in another car. He is now being charged with larceny, reckless endangerment, and second degree manslaughter. Police 
Police say more arrests are expected. Police are still searching for the group of pro-Palestine demonstrators who were accused of vandalizing a bank in West Hartford. This incident happened last month. 150 people gathered calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. At some point, a group of them spray painted the Webster Bank on LaSalle Road. Police released these pictures of someone they think could have been involved here. If you recognize them, call West Hartford Police. We have much more coming up here.